I mean, how do you become a first time home buyer in this crazy world that we live in? Don't worry. I'm going to walk you through some steps. I'm going to educate you a little and you're going to feel so much better at the end of this video. Hi everybody, welcome or welcome back to The Real Justine Priestley channel. I am The Real Justine Priestley, your local realtor with a twist here in the greater Vancouver area. And in this video, we're gonna walk through some steps that first time home buyers need to know. Step four is the extra, extra fun part. That's looking at properties. I love looking at properties. I love taking clients around to look at stuff. In my opinion, it's a great idea to look at lots of stuff. Off. Hopefully your realtor is willing to do this with you. It can be quite time consuming, but that's the only way to really learn what's out there in the areas that you want to look at. Buying can often be really a process of elimination. So if you see five or eight or 10 apartments that you know you don't want, then when the one comes along that you do want, you're going to know right away and you're going to know what to do. I have a rule with my clients and that is that they're not allowed to fall in love. Not until you get the keys and you're moving in, then you can fall in love. And especially don't fall in love with a show home. Please don't do that, okay? Lots of communication is very important at all of the stages of this, but during this stage, I would talk to your realtor about everything. Tell them everything you like, everything you don't like. Talk very openly about the good, the bad, the ugly, and the beautiful. Okay, you found something that you really, really like. You don't love it, but you really, really like it. The next stage is making an offer. Making an offer can be a very complicated process and I'm not going to go into great, great detail here. Hopefully your realtor will walk you through the contract of purchase and sale, which is a six page document that you will have to sign and initial throughout. And hopefully you have a chance to read all the way through it yourself or your realtor could sit down with you and go over it point by point by point, paragraph by paragraph, explaining everything to you. It's really important that you know what you're signing and you feel comfortable signing it. Remember, when you're making an offer, you're not just negotiating price. You can negotiate all kinds of things. It often comes down mostly to price and dates. When are you going to move in? When are you going to take possession? When is the completion going to happen? You can negotiate furniture. You can negotiate different conditions, sometimes called subjects that you're going to put on your offer. Hopefully you can get a property inspection. Hopefully you can have time to get your financing in order. It's very complex, but your realtor should hold your hand through this whole thing. Ask lots of questions. Make sure you feel super comfortable when you sign. The contract is between the buyer and the seller. Speaking of that, great time to smoosh the like. If you really want this home, my advice is to communicate that. Your offer is a message. You're sending a message. And just like in a relationship, if you were dating someone and you really liked them and you wanted to spend more time with them, you wouldn't just go like, yeah, whatever, right? You want the relationship to go forward. So you want them to know the truth. Honesty is the best policy. Here's a secret realtor tip from me. As a buyer, it can often be useful to write a personal letter to the seller. In some jurisdictions, there are restrictions or bylaws around this, but in BC, there aren't any. It's just a personal letter. For example, let's say you're buying a house and it's been a family home for 30 years and the sellers are, are elderly, they're downsizing, but they raised their family in that house. It can be a very emotional time for them letting go of their home where all of their babies were born, etc. So if you were a buyer and you were going to live in the house and raise your own family there, why not write a letter saying that? We love your home. We're going to raise our kids here just like you did. How much would that seller react to that and want you to live there rather than maybe someone who plans to tear down an older home and build something new? Ding! While in negotiation in the making an offer phase, just remember that the contract you're writing is a roadmap as you go forward. Step six, assuming that you have an accepted offer, yay! Now you're gonna do the home inspection. This is very important. 
you need a certified home inspector to come and look through the house and find any issues that may cost you significant amount of money or stress in the future. A lot of times a home inspector can spot many, many things that you and I cannot. An inspection report will often uncover a lot of problems, but don't worry about the minor ones. You just make a trip to Home Depot. It's the big ones that may cost you thousands of dollars that you really want to concern yourself with. And this is something you could negotiate. If the home inspection finds something, you're still in conversation with the seller. Maybe they can pay for a repair or split the repair with you. There's lots of ways to solve problems. And if you do find something in the inspection that is unsatisfactory to you and cannot be resolved, then this is a way that you can back out of the deal because your condition has not been met. Step seven is subject removal. So you had say subject to financing, subject to home inspection. Your mortgage guy has given you two thumbs up, your home inspection went well, and you're satisfied with the condition of the home. No surprises coming up as far as we can see and you're ready to remove subjects. This is the moment where the deal goes firm, that's what they call it, and it becomes a legally binding contract at that time. If either party wanted to back out at this point, they would be in breach of contract. There's usually 60 days, but it can be negotiated anyway, longer or shorter. This is where you get your lawyer or notary involved. They are the ones that move around the large sums of money and they do the statement of adjustments and they transfer the title from the sellers. They clear all the financial charges on it usually and then they give it to you and it's your house and you are on title. That's very official. Step eight is when you move into your new home. You get your keys and your moving van. I love moving my clients into their new homes. I just want to say here that what I do is I help buyers and sellers overcome the stress and worry of moving by being in their corner every step of the way. I'm never too busy for calls or emails. Reach out anytime. I'm here to help and I'm here for you. I hope you feel a little more comfortable now about the process of being a first time home buyer. If you have any questions or if I can help you in any way, reach out anytime. Question of the day. What do you think is the most fun part of being a first time buyer? Drop it in the comments.